everyone! This video is all about why you can and actually need to move with scoliosis and also how you can feel better by changing your mindset. Hi, my name is Veronica. I am a yoga for scoliosis teacher and welcome to Scoli Space, my YouTube channel where I'm talking about scoliosis and also sharing yoga for scoliosis videos. This video is actually a recording of a workshop I've done in the past, which I think is super valuable and it's part one out of three. So in this video, I will cover um, many misconceptions and fears which are connected to moving with scoliosis. We will also answer uh, common questions which are connected to moving with scoliosis. I'll talk about pain and um, I'll explain where it comes from and how to approach it. The next uh, very important chapter I'll cover is uh, why movement matters and why you actually can move with scoliosis, why it's safe and how movement can help you. And finally, I will also focus on mindset, which is super important uh, with any condition, with scoliosis especially, what I've found. And so we will focus on why mindset matters and how you can work with it to feel better. So let's dive in. I hope you'll enjoy it. I know many of you know me uh, maybe from Instagram or at least some of you know me where I'm kind of trying to spread awareness about scoliosis and kind of about um, let's say a maybe a better approach to scoliosis and um, I will just share a little bit about how I got into that so I'll just share a little bit of my story so um, I was diagnosed when I was 15 years old and it was quite a surprise for me. I know many of you probably were diagnosed earlier and uh, you can let me know in the comments at what age you were diagnosed and uh, what degrees you have if you want. And um, yeah, I got a 43 degrees lumbar curve and 32 degrees thoracic curve. And um, I was really just surprised and confused. I had no idea what scoliosis was. And it really just kind of felt, you know, like the end of the world to me. And I was so depressed and I was crying a lot. And it was just really a lot to take in. Because of course, um, when you're 15 years old, like a teenager, you always want to fit in and you want everybody to like you. And of course, you're starting to think about boys and stuff. So <laughs> this was also something which really made me feel insecure in the beginning. And I felt really, really bad about it. And um, they told me that I should wear a brace for 23 hours a day. But they also told me that it will probably not help me uh, as I'm already too old for it. So I was like, what the hell? <laughs> And it was just a really terrible experience in the hospital. Everyone was treating me terribly. And um, I got the brace, the really hard plastic one. And I tried to wear it, but it hurt so bad that I was crying myself to sleep and I couldn't fall asleep. And a funny part is that um, very soon I would start to wake up and the brace would be like two meters away from me on the ground and it fell from the bed. I was like, how the hell did that happen? I mean, it was so hard to put the brace on. And then um, I just like somehow in my sleep took the brace off without me actually uh, waking up and it was somewhere around my bed, you know, so that was quite funny. And um, very soon I threw the brace away into the plastic bin. <laughs> I'm not telling everyone to do the same, of course. Um, this is just um, my story and I think it's quite funny. So that's why I like to share it. But um, yeah, so it just didn't make much sense to me and I threw it away. <laughs> and then of course they were forcing me into surgery. I can see some comments here. Yeah, you had the hard plastic brace too. It's terrible, I know. And it hurts so bad, really. And I don't see really so much point in wearing it, but I'll get into that later. Um, yeah, sorry about your hospital experience. I've had some awful ones too. Yeah, that's what I hear about a lot actually. And I find this so sad 
because people should be, you know, supported. I get it that doctors can't be like emotional support for everyone and uh, it would be hard for them too, but um, they could at least not tell you in a horrible way and treat you horribly when you're in there, you know, and definitely I don't want to say that all doctors are like this, but the sad thing is that uh, in my community here in the Czech Republic, where I also teach uh, public classes in person, many young girls share this experience. So I'm just really, really sad about this. You were so sick, so excited to have surgery after having the brace. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'm not really a person for surgery, but I totally understand uh, if you decide for it. Um, but yeah, and I wanted to continue in this story. So actually what happened was I went to um, Brno, which is a city um, here in the Czech Republic where they specialize in surgery and they're actually um, told to be really good. And um, so they actually practically were forcing me into the surgery, but we, when we heard it, we were like, no, me and my mom were like, no, that's not the option. So I was kind of looking around for some other options and I was just trying out some stuff and nothing was really working. And then I found yoga and um, this was really, I think a lifesaver for me because I finally learned um, that I actually can move and that movement actually really helps. And I will dive into um, the benefits of movement uh, during the workshop soon. And yeah, I'm again not saying that everyone should do yoga. And of course, regular yoga is not ideal for everyone, and especially for scoliosis. There are certain things which you should be careful about, and we'll talk about it tomorrow as well. But uh, I think this was a great start for me. And since then, I've been kind of exploring other ways how to move. And I know many of you, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that uh, I am a yoga teacher and that I was certified um, also by or not certified, but I took the training of Alice Browning Miller. Uh, I didn't have the chance to do the training with her yet, which gets the certification, but I spent two weekends studying with her and it was a really nice experience. For those who don't know her, she is um, like the, um, how do you say this in English? Well, she was just the one who brought this into the world, you know, this message that you can actually do yoga uh, with scoliosis and that it actually really helps. So she was a really lovely person and she still is. And I learned a lot from her. And then I got into Iyengar yoga and I studied it for two years. I was aspiring to become an Iyengar yoga teacher because it really was helping me a lot. But this year I just dropped out after two years because it was just too much. <laughs> and I decided to go a little different path. So right now I'm kind of exploring also other ways how to move and I'm incorporating a lot of biomechanics and all these things which I'm reading about and studying and it's quite exciting honestly so of course I'll be sharing this with you in the future but I think that's enough for my story I just wanted you to kind of get an idea where I'm coming from and um, yeah why I do what I do so basically um, right now I'm trying to spread awareness and to give tips uh, to everyone with scoliosis that they actually can use movement as a healing tool for not only their body, but also their soul and their mind. And for me, I think, um, and for many others, um, and also many uh, professionals who specialize in scoliosis, uh, which I know, they actually, um, or we actually share this opinion that movement is the true medicine for scoliosis. And it's the thing which really helps the most. And, um, so let's dive a little bit into the misconceptions and uh, the fears and the things that are told by doctors, which mm, not uh, which might not be necessarily true. <laughs> so I know it's a tricky thing to say, but um, what I'm going for here is that, um, and let me know in the comments because I want to know. Uh, who else was told by their doctors that they should not do any sports, that there was nothing they could do for their scoliosis and that they should just see and wait. That's the worst, I think, just to wait and see <laughs> what happens. <laughs> and um, yeah, so let me know uh, in the comments who was told by the doctor that they were not supposed to move, that they were not supposed to do any sports and that there was actually nothing they could do except bracing and surgery. 
So I'm really curious about this one uh, because I hear from my clients and from people I talk with also a lot that um, they are told things like this very often. So um, I want to dive a little bit into what people were also answering on Instagram. And um, they were telling me, or actually I was asking them um, about what they want to know about movement and scoliosis or why they are actually afraid um, to move with scoliosis. Yeah, I can already see that people are raising their hands with the smileys <laughs> that they were told the things I was mentioning. Yeah, another one was, I can still see your names though, which is quite a pity. So if you could click just on the link above the video, that would be really nice to see your names. Um, yeah. You got the same. No sports or anything like it. Yeah. I'm so sorry about this. I mean, and um, this is not to put kind of shame or like hate on doctors. Definitely not. Um, because it's also a hard position they're in. Um, because, you know, every scoliosis is unique. And the truth is that sometimes it can be really hard in that really short amount of time they have dedicated for you to be able to explain you what you can do and what you can't. And um, very often, um, this is just what they do just to be safe, you know, so they tell you there's nothing you can do and that you shouldn't do any sports because they feel that um, this is a good advice for you that uh, you can't hurt yourself this way. But the truth is, and this is the first big myth I want to uncover, is that movement is like really dangerous for scoliosis and that it doesn't help and things like that. This is really the biggest myth. I think we need to delete this. <laughs> and again, there are of course some specific things which are good to be aware of and careful about, but it is super important to move. Seriously, if you have scoliosis, you have to move. You just have to move because this is what keeps your body healthy and this is what uh, will help you. And, um, you know, this is also a thing um, because many people say they're afraid to move because of pain. And I will dive into that a little bit deeper um, in a, a short moment. But uh, the thing is that actually with movement uh, and with mindful movement, you can actually prevent and even reduce pain. So this is also something which is really important to know, I think because I know many people who are entering this group and uh, they were answering my questions, which I have before I entered the group, they were actually uh, mentioning pain a lot. So I just want to tell you that there are ways how you can um, actually reduce your pain um, with uh, movement. And uh, I think this is important to know. And of course, you should not move in a way which makes you um, hurt more or which hurts more and which increases your pain. But I think it's really important to experiment. And maybe if you try something and it hurts, then maybe try to do it slightly different or just observe when it hurt, where it hurt and why. And it's just really important to kind of experiment with your body and see what is okay for you and what is not. I'm just gonna take a look at these comments. Someone got recommended physical therapy, but the therapist didn't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry. This is so sad, but I had exactly the same experience when I was diagnosed with scoliosis. They sent me to physical therapy and they didn't even explain to me what scoliosis was and like how I should move or, you know, just anything useful. The lady who was doing the physical therapy, she was actually just obsessed about um, strengthening my um muscles between the shoulder blades, which was of course very boring and it didn't make much sense. <laughs> yeah, somebody else is saying I went to PT too and they had me swim, which was actually super helpful. They also had me walk a lot. Yeah, that's great. I know many people get recommended uh, swimming and um, I've heard that many people benefit from swimming, but I will get into this um, also just in a minute that actually uh, what is important to know is that it's actually not so important what you do, like what movement you do. It can be Pilates, it can be yoga, it can be strength training, it can be whatever else, dancing even. 
But what really matters with scoliosis is how you do it. So how you move. And I think there is really great space for um, kind of working with this, because if you have someone work with you, they can actually help you to understand your body and to understand your individual uh, curve pattern. And um, then you can actually um, put these better movement patterns, which you learn into what you already do. So I think this is also um, super important to realize and to know that actually you should and you can move, but it just really matters how you do it. And of course, if you move and you're in a lot of pain, then it's important to look into it and kind of do a little investigation where the pain is coming from and then try to um, see and try different ways how you can move so that the pain is um, being reduced or it's not there anymore. So let me see another message. Kristinka, hi, that's actually a student of mine from Czech Republic. She was forced to have surgery, but she was saved by the physiotherapist and yoga classes. He told her that she can move and that it can help her pain. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you to this physiotherapist. <laughs> so she started yoga classes, teachers who know, but um, it's not good classes for me. Now I'm a little bit confused what it meant, but... <laughs> Oh, okay. So she wasn't sure what to do in the yoga classes and then she found me. I get it. So yeah, that's nice. Hi, Christinka. Thank you for a message. So um, I'm going to dive a little bit into um, the pain because I think it's really important. So um, there's also a big misconception about pain and this is uh, because people usually are not sure where the pain is coming from. So what is really important to realize is that um, actually uh, the pain is uh, basically a signal from your brain that something is different or that something is going on. So um, this is super important because this doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you are doing something which is completely terrible, dangerous, and it will hurt you. Um, of course, it can mean that thing, but usually it can be also many other things. So um, it can usually also be just, for example, from stress. So your nervous system becomes way more sensitive and then it sends you these signals um, that you, know, you should better be careful about because for example, the body is already tired and then the nervous system is tired. And so the brain is kind of um, just sending these signals as a prevention. So it's kind of like um, making you rest and making you uh, just not move so much or not do so much because you're already tired. And um, this is just kind of a protection system of uh, the brain. So it's also really important to relax and um, kind of take a rest because um, as I said, it's connected with that your body is tired or your nervous system is tired or generally you're just maybe uh, overstressed. So the nervous system is stressed and all these issues or all these things can actually uh, contribute to um, raising levels of pain. So I think this is also super important to realize and um, I find really relaxation helpful very helpful. So like um, when I have a lot going on or when I sometimes have pain, I just like to lie down for five, 10 minutes and just relaxing. You know, it doesn't have to be meditation specifically. They can just play some relaxing music and just lie down and try not to think about anything. So that's uh, one of the things. Of course, it can be like an old injury or some sensitive spot. So it's always good to be careful about it. But it can be also, for example, that you are attempting to do something unusual, something new, which the body is not used to yet. And uh, so it's just sending a warning again through pain, just to make you kind of more aware and more um, awake, let's say, so that you really look into what you are doing. And um, with scoliosis specifically, it can also be very often, for example, muscle spasms. So um, we will dive into this tomorrow more in detail, but uh, I'm sure many of you know that 
with scoliosis, there is usually like one weaker side and a stronger side. And the stronger side, which is usually outside of the curve on the um, convex side of the curve, and don't worry if you don't know, I will tell you tomorrow everything about it. But it's just this place where you have overworked muscles and they can hurt just because they're overworked and um, they are just tired and they can't handle it. And it's those, and, and for example, also it's because there are muscle imbalances in the scoliosis or like in the scoliotic body. And so uh, sometimes muscles which are not supposed to do the job are doing the job of more other muscles which should be active, but they're not active. You see, so um, it can be also those muscle spasms, which is very often a cause of pain for people with scoliosis. And um, this is something which can be really helped by um, specific exercise. When you strengthen your core and when you create more balance in your body, then you can really pretty much get rid of the muscle spasms. Again, it depends on your condition and on the size of your curve. But for example, I don't have those anymore and I used to have them quite a lot. So this is something which I was successful in. Then of course it can be some tight muscles. It can be some trauma like psychological but also physical trauma. It can be sleep deprivation and um, it can be even just that you're not doing a lot or not, like not you're doing now I got tangled into it. It's not that you're not doing a lot, but it can be even that you're underworked or you're just, you know, not moving the body. So this can also be a cause of pain, for example. So I just want it and it can be much more. So this is just like a little, um, let's say, uh, insight into the different reasons why things can hurt. Here I'm getting some more comments. So let's see what people say. I've had pain constantly for 15 years and I'm wondering where there it'll be possible to reduce or get rid of it. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I know that many people with scoliosis suffer from pain. And if it's really intense, then it's I think it's really important to find some physical therapist who is qualified and who is really experienced and good in what they do. And um, maybe they can help you. And it really depends on the levels of pain, of course. Like sometimes um, movement can help, but sometimes maybe um, you need also a little bit of some specific release and massage or even osteopathy or, or like an orthopedist, you know, so it really depends. And I think it's really important to kind of investigate and um, to try things and to see what works for you. Um, another question, do you think that it can be corrected or prevented from getting worse? So I guess you mean the scoliosis curvature. Well, uh, it can definitely be prevented from getting worse. And um, this is a good question or a good timing of the question, because um, actually uh, this is the most unfortunate thing we have, uh, that people often say there is nothing you can do about scoliosis and you shouldn't do any sports or you just shouldn't move in general. <laughs> and I think this is really so sad because actually movement is what can prevent uh, the scoliosis from getting worse. And um, if you move in a specific way and do specific exercises to your unique curvature, then you might be even able to improve it. So there are stories, I know, um, for example, many people who do shrub therapy, I always pronounce it wrong, so sorry if I'm not pronouncing it wrong, uh, if I am pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> so um, the shrub therapy is quite successful in actually reducing curvatures, but I know many people find it, for example, boring, but I'm kind of ex exploring their principles too. I got a really nice book um, and there are really some interesting and nice things which I like to incorporate into my, um, into my exercising routine. And um, if I would give you some specific advice, it's mostly about, you know, as I said, the movement, it's not about what you do, but it's how you do it. So actually you can use the movement you enjoy and the activity you enjoy and apply those principles of self-correction there. So it's important to learn where your curve is and um, how kind of where your body is in space and where are the imbalances. For example, which side is dropping down, which side is coming up and where the curve or which side the, your spine is curving to. 
And I think it's super helpful to have the x-ray for this. Now oh, I got tangled in my hair. So the x-ray can be really helpful. Um, just print it out and put it on your window or on your door or wherever you exercise and then you can look at it. But also uh, connecting it with like taking a picture of your back and having it there. Especially when you're starting, I think these two things can be really useful. And um, also um, one more thing I wanted to say. Oh yeah, the mirrors. The mirrors are your biggest friends. Like for me, for example, when I'm brushing my teeth, <laughs> I like to stand in the um, uh, in my bathroom and I'm just looking at myself in the mirror and kind of like playing with my curves and correcting them. Um, and uh, you know, it's just the more you uh, practice self-correcting yourself the more um, you will be able to keep it up. Because I know many people when they start correcting their curve uh, or in general, their like movement patterns and their posture, they're like, yeah, okay. So I can correct myself for like three seconds and then, you know, I'm tired and I can't hold it up any longer. <laughs> and of course this is perfectly normal. So if this happens to you, then don't give up <laughs> and don't worry. It's just about that you need to practice and that you need to um, get the body used to it and um, kind of also train the muscles. Because imagine if you're, for example, over 25, like me, then, for example, for 10 years or more, you've been in this specific, you know, uh, posture. And then all of a sudden you wanted to improve in five minutes. So, of course, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> but uh, if you practice and um, if you really uh, build body awareness and you practice proprioception, so you're practicing where your body is in space and you learn slowly to correct yourself better and better, there's really a lot you can do. So you can create way more balance in your body um, and you can also create way more balance in your muscles. So this is why also the muscle spasms might, um, might go away. And also just aesthetically, you know, I know many people are worried about how they look and I wish we all weren't so much obsessed about um, what other people think about us, but I totally understand that, especially if you're starting, it's just something that is worrying you a lot. So um, yes, if you exercise, if you do specific exercises, then um, you actually can uh, improve your posture and you can improve the way your body looks. Again, it will be very individual because every curve and every scoliosis is unique, but um, I am really, um, really sure <laughs> that uh, there is always something you can do and there is always something that can be improved. And uh, things uh, which we'll also uh, talk about tomorrow, uh, what I like to start with, with all my students is kind of practicing traction. So that means you're practicing elongation of your spine. Then it's super important to work on derotation because with every scoliosis, there comes a rotation. And again, I will talk about this more in detail tomorrow. So don't worry if you don't understand. And so we're just kind of also strengthening the core and practicing the neutral posture and the neutral position of the spine as much as we can. I, I think I heard this from Elise Browning Miller, which I really liked is um, that everything which is coming out, you need to work on bringing in and everything that is coming in, you need to work on kind of bringing out, you know, or another uh, saying I heard is like, put it where it belongs and then move it. <laughs> so that means you try to um, achieve the most neutral position of your spine and of your body, and then you move it. And this is a really simple, but really good principle. I think everyone can use in anything, any movement they're practicing. We kind of already touched this topic, but um, I promised you that I would talk about how movement can help you. So um, yes, uh, movement can help you to prevent and reduce pain. And again, please don't be afraid to move. Definitely in the beginning, it's good to do some movements and sports where you can maintain a neutral posture of your body and your torso. 
And I know somebody was asking me on Instagram and they were like, yes, yeah, so they told me I cannot bend to the sides. They told me I can't do any back bends. I can't do any forward bends and I can't do any twists. So what, like, should I move like a robot or what? <laughs> and I thought, um, yeah, that this question sounded a little bit funny, but also I totally understand where it's coming from. So of course people are like confused that somebody tells them that they can do any of these movements. And again, like I said, with the doctors, it's the safest thing they can tell you. So they want to keep you safe. They don't have enough time to explain to you and to teach you how to move. And so this is why they tell you these things because um, in their opinion or from the point where they're coming from, they um, feel that this is safe for you. And I know many people who do shrug therapy are saying things like this. And um, the thing is, I know where they're coming from or I can see where they're coming from. And I agree to a certain degree. But again, applying this thing, which I said, it doesn't matter that much what you do, but how you do it. And we'll get into the principles of uh, moving with scoliosis tomorrow. So I don't want to get tangled into this today because it would take a long time and then we wouldn't cover the rest of what I wanted to talk about. Um, so yeah, so actually um, it can help you to reduce and prevent pain. It can help, so movement can help uh, to prevent your scoliosis from getting worse. So again, as I said before, it's uh, really beneficial for you to practice uh, poses and exercises where it's easier for you to keep uh, a neutral alignment of your spine or kind of to achieve a neutral position as much as you can, of course, and this will improve through time again. Um, so I know many people like write me or, or comment that it's really hard for them to move their curve actually. And um, this is again, um, very normal because your body has been used to this for many years probably. And so um, it is already used to be in this position and it will take some time until you're able to um, kind of release the really tight muscles and strengthen the really weak muscles and um, before you can kind of change the alignment. So usually there is always like a little improvement you can do and it depends on how mobile you are. Um, but through time it gets better and better and then you can improve your alignment more and more and you can achieve a more neutral position of your spine uh, when you keep working on it. So that's something else I wanted to mention. And um, yeah, it creates more balance in the body, but uh, also in the mind. And this is something which is really um, important and what I want to talk about as well. Because um, what I and many other people I am in touch with who are kind of um, talking about scoliosis awareness and are working with people who have scoliosis, but not only people with scoliosis, but also in general with other people, the truth is that really, if you're moving mindfully, then it boosts your self-confidence so much. It really helps you to love your body the way it is and to embrace it the way it is. And I think especially yoga is a really great tool for this. But of course, I'm not saying that it is the only tool. It's just about that we spend some time um, in meditation and sometimes also expressing gratefulness and and you know, just the way you move uh, in yoga. And um, again, I'm saying a mindful movement because I think it doesn't necessarily um, have to be only yoga, but it's the way how you do it. So if you're mindful and you're practicing with awareness, the truth is that you can really improve um, how you feel in your body physically and how you feel in your body mentally. So it can really help you to accept the body the way it is and to learn to love it the way it is and to embrace it. But uh, actually it's also um, kind of a motivation or how to say this, it gives you hope or it, it's, it's empowering. That was the word I was looking for. So I think I wrote it also on my website somewhere that I like empowering people with scoliosis. And this is so true. 
um, because I feel that very often uh, people with scoliosis and again, not only people with scoliosis, but generally people um, who have some health issues, let's say, uh, they tend to give the responsibility away to the medical system and they are kind of just looking for someone to fix them and to fix the problem and to fix it as soon as possible. So ideally within one hour, I want this fixed and um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then they're surprised that actually it's not working like this. <laughs> and I know, again, it's hard and it's not easy, of course. I don't want to make anyone feel bad because of this. I just think it's important to talk about it because um, it is super, super important that we take the responsibility for our healing into our own hands. And I know it's hard, okay? <laughs> I know it's not easy, but um, I think this is really the only way how you can actually do something about it and how you can actually improve. Um, so I'm not saying that you should right now stop seeing all the doctors and just figure it out by yourself. Definitely not. <laughs> I just want you to think about um, how you approach scoliosis and how you approach your health. If you, um, if you are proactive about it, if you are thinking about things you can do for improving the health, or if you are giving your responsibility completely away outside and you are relying on other people to fix you. So I think this is a really important thing um, to mention. And um, let me know in the comments if there is someone who has already taken the responsibility for their healing and for their health. I'd really like to know. <laughs> So I think what is really important about this is that you kind of become your own uh, mm, healing treatment supervisor, however you want to call it, and that you keep observing your body and you keep experimenting with the body. And I know that many people have really negative feelings about scoliosis, but actually scoliosis can be a really great way how to um, get to know yourself, how to get to know your body. And it can be also a great possibility for you to just really, or motivation for you to move the body and to take good care of it. Because especially in the Western world, we are so used to taking the body as, um, damn it, again, I'm missing a word, <laughs> as something that is like, you know, for granted. And we are not really taking care of it. And we are just, then when it's some, somehow something is wrong and it's broken and we go like to the auto mechanics, you know, like with our car and like, here it is, fix it for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I think this is not a great approach because um, doing something about your health and about your scoliosis takes courage and it takes a lot of, um, responsibility and patience. Somebody's writing, trying to take responsibility. Yay, happy for you. <laughs> Such a good point. I wish I'd realized that years ago. Now I feel like I'm making responsibility, taking responsibility and becoming a lot more aware. Jane, great. Good for you, Jane. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> so this is something I also really um, try to point out on my social media because Scoliosis is such a complex issue and I personally believe that everything happens for a reason and that actually maybe it's supposed to teach us something, you know, and you don't have to believe into anything esoteric or whatever. It can be just, you know, taking care of your body, taking care of yourself, listening to your body, listening to yourself, listening to your needs and just nurturing your body and nurturing your mind as well, because that's also important. You see, now I got from my point somewhere else, but it is actually related to the topic still. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is also a very important point I like to say, because um, the thing is that I know it's not easy, uh, but the thing is that once you take the responsibility and once you start being in charge of your health, 
then it is so empowering and it is so motivating because then you realize that you can actually do something about it and that you can improve it and that you can or you are able to do something to improving your life and to improving even your posture or whatever is important to you. And the fun thing is that uh, once you start observing and experimenting with your body, then it doesn't stop there, but it comes into the mind as well, into the head. <laughs> and then you start observing who you are and how you are behaving in different situations and why you are behaving like that. And this can also be a um, pretty important key to living a happier and a better life. So just dropping it out there. <laughs> I hope I didn't scare you. <laughs> And uh, I'm just going to check uh, the points I have here on my list because I just need to stay on track. I need that list to make me stay on track. Mm, yeah, right. Something else I really want to focus on. And now I'm again asking you, I want to know how you are measuring or by what you are measuring success of your treatment of anything you do for your scoliosis. Is it according to if it makes you feel better, if it improves your quality of life, or are you only focusing and obsessing about the degrees and your curvature? Be honest, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Actually, I'm pointing wrong, it's down there. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna give you a moment to think about it and to uh, let me know in the comments. I hope you do. I hope you're not scared. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna make you feel bad about it. It's again just um, maybe an interesting thing to think about. And I will talk about it uh, as soon as you say something. And I have a comment here. Ana Maria is saying something. I've been a long time in a victim role that nothing can be done from my side because I feel that nobody really understands how it is to be caged into the body and not knowing what to do about it. It took a lot of time for me to understand that I am the only one responsible for my own happiness. Yes, I love that. I do have awareness now, yet I still feel like a stranger in my own body. Great job, Ana Maria, I love it. <laughs> That's a great point there. And uh, the thing is, especially, yeah, we are responsible for our own happiness. And we can um, make the diagnosis, make us feel depressed, or we can take it into our own hands and make the best out of it, what we can. You know, it's always here in your head <laughs> or what you make out of it. And um, yeah, uh, I wanted to say something about the awareness that she still feels like she is a stranger in her own body. That is actually a, a very common issue. Uh, in people with scoliosis and I'll talk about it tomorrow uh, more because it's related to hypermobility also but not only I'm just pointing it out because it just came into my head so many people who have scoliosis actually are also hypermobile which means that their joints are kind of a so more soft or more mobile I can show you what it means here my lovely elbows People think it's disgusting. <laughs> it's a bit creepy, I know. <laughs> Anybody else has these weird elbows? <laughs> I got it from my mom. It runs in the family. Her elbows are even weirder and softer. So um, yeah, what, what was I going to tell you? Hypermobility, <laughs> yeah. So um, hypermobility, but also just, you know, um, it's again, it's bringing us to that we are not supposed to move. And this is a kind of, um, uh, how do we say it in English? It's kind of a cycle, which is um, not good because if you are not aware of your body, you should move. But if you are not moving, you will not be aware of your body. You know, So um, it's really important to start moving and start observing your body. And there are certain ways how you can increase proprioception. But I think um, just any doing anything and like, for example, standing in front of the mirror, if you're not aware of your own body, just standing in front of the mirror and um, moving the body and just looking how it is moving in the mirror can be a really good start. 
or for example also when you're exercising it's a great um, tip to maybe film yourself and then you can rewatch the tape and see what you did and try to correlate it with how you felt so this is also a really great thing which has helped me a lot and you don't feel well with your posture that's the thing that um, for example um, and it's again related to what I was talking uh, about until now that uh, we are not aware of our body or we don't have good proprioception what I mean with this is for example a very um, very often it happens when somebody comes to me to work with me and with their scoliosis and um, you tell someone or you even know it from your um, when you were growing up or something that um, you know parents telling you like stand up straight or sit up straight and you're like yeah but I am straight you know <laughs> or at least I feel straight and that's again related to proprioception and the body awareness and how we feel uh, where our body is in space because because <laughs> I think I'm talking too fast I'm getting ahead of myself um yeah uh because uh we don't feel the body where it is um then it's hard for us to correct our alignment and so the crucial part of anything that you do for your scoliosis, like any movement you practice for your scoliosis, should be really working on body awareness, increasing proprioception, which is uh, specifically that uh, increasing the feeling of your body and where it is in space. So this is super, super important. Uh, yeah, I asked how we measure success. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So you measure success by um, reducing pain, I guess, and improving mobility. Yeah, definitely. And as we are talking about mobility, um, I think it's also important to talk about flexibility versus mobility. And I'm just going to get into that after I read this comment, what we focus on besides the curve degree to see if we're having success. Yeah, actually, the question was if you are measuring the success only by the curve, or by the quality of life. If you are able to say that you have success with your treatment, even if the degrees, for example, don't reduce, that's the thing I was talking about and I'm gonna get into it in a moment. Thank you for reminding me, <laughs> I got carried away. So um, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, it can uh, get better, the proprioception can get better with yoga, but um, it's important uh, to be careful in yoga because there are certain things um, which are not really great for people with scoliosis. And it's bringing me back to the flexibility versus mobility because in modern yoga, very often there is um, emphasis on flexibility so that means that everyone is measuring like their success in the yoga poses that they are flexible enough and that they can put their palms on the ground and put their leg behind the neck and whatever <laughs> i don't know i'm a yoga teacher so i'm not trying to hate on people who do yoga definitely not but just um, bringing on an important point that it's not just about the flexibility but it should be about mobility which means mobility is more about functional range of motion you know where and how you can move how far you can move to um still have it functional to kind of have functional support from your muscles and from your body so um it is necessarily not great if you're very flexible and maybe people who are hypermobile uh they know it because um, we are so wobbly and our body is kind of not supported well enough by our muscles. And I will get into hypermobility more um, tomorrow again, but I just want to tackle this topic. So actually for people who are hypermobile, for example, and many people who, are, uh, who have scoliosis are hypermobile, they should um, focus more on strength than flexibility in general again, okay? So everyone uh, has a different body and there might be things that they need to focus on. But generally we really need to focus on having good support in our muscles because eventually this is what will help us to um, 
prevent the scoliosis from getting worse and to uh, get better support and improve our posture. Okay, so this is it. And um, yeah, let me continue. So we were talking about the curvatures and that is something else I would like to put emphasis on because um, very often I used to get now, um, I don't get them anymore as often, but I used to get messages like, you know, show me uh, an exercise which will improve my curve. And that's again, like I can't help someone through the message, giving them just one exercise, which will be the miracle exercise for fixing their scoliosis. <laughs> it's just, you know, um, more complex and um, it is not that simple, but on the other hand, it is simple. So there are certain principles which will help you, which was again, as I said before already, moving your body in a way where you try to put your spine into a neutral position as much as you can and you're practicing in a smart way. So you're focusing on firing the right muscles and getting the right support from the muscles which you need in your body and you're focusing on elongation. And um, so this obsession about the curvature getting worse or better, again, I feel you, I know where you're coming from um, and I totally understand. And I think um, it's a bit unfortunate because hmm, many people, just obsess about uh, the curvature and if it's uh, getting worse or if it's improving and they don't take as a success, for example, when the curvature stays the same, which for me, um, for a long time, I think for like 10 years, my curvature was the same and um, it didn't change, <laughs> even though people were saying like it might progress quickly. So I think that's also um, thanks to that I was moving, even though not as intentionally as I'm moving now and as mindfully, but it was helping me definitely to keep my body upright. And um, the doctors, of course, focused on the curvatures because that's something they measure the success by usually. Again, I'm not saying all doctors are the same, but uh, what happens very often. And of course, this is what the patients do then. So we focus on the curvature and never like obsessed about if it's getting worse or not. And if it's not improving, then we feel, feel bad. But um, actually I think that we should uh, take as our main aim or our main goal uh, for treatment of scoliosis and um, moving with scoliosis should be measuring it by the quality of life, you know? So I love that you were saying that you measure the success by uh, that you improve pain or that you improve mobility or that you improve your posture. So those are all great things to focus on and all positive things. But um, if you're only obsessed about the degrees, I don't think it's a great, it's a great uh, approach. And I'm going to dive into why. So i um, just going to turn the side around so that I don't miss anything. I have my bullet points here to keep me on track. So um, this might be a little um, weird for you, but actually um, I've been reading about this a lot recently and it's coming from quantum physics and it's the research about energy and about matter and things like that. And before you stop listening, yes, it's correlated to scoliosis <laughs> and to our health. So what they actually have discovered is that everything around us is practically energy. And um, even all the um, uh, objects like, I don't know, my speaker here or a pen or something or the telephone, everything is energy or the table you're um, sitting at. And the same goes for your body, the same goes for your mind and the same goes for your thoughts. And um, I really want you to think now just to take a moment and think about how you think about your scoliosis, how you think about your body and how you feel about it. And um, very often we have this negative approach and this negative feeling. 
And this negative feeling um, can really influence our health and it can influence what happens in our body. And uh, so it's super important to also be aware of uh, your thoughts because um, it is just really, really important in the way that if I don't dive into this energy stuff, because I know not everyone believes in it, um, then just think about it the way that are you going to work out if you hate your body and if every time you look at your body, you just think it's ugly and it's terrible and you don't want it. Will you be motivated to do something for it, to treat yourself, to nurture yourself? Probably not. Or I would say probably not. <laughs> I used to be this way. Like I used to hate it. And um, then when I already started liking it kind of, or stopped disliking it, that was another thing which I was doing. And I think it's a big mistake. And that is kind of being really hard on myself in the way that I thought, okay, so I have to move every day because I'm a yoga instructor and because of my scoliosis and I just have to move every day. And eventually it was really stressing me out. <laughs> Let me know in the comments um, if you are also hard on yourself and if you're stressing yourself out for not doing the things you planned for yourself to do or not doing the things that you think you should do. Um, and, you know, last year I changed the approach a lot and I just realized, why am I doing this? Like, it's not bringing me anywhere. It's just bringing me further from my goals and it's bringing me further from um, what I actually want to do and like to do. And so I just was observing it. And every time I started being again negative and like really mean to myself, I just stopped and I was like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, <laughs> just be kind to yourself. So I think it's really important um, to have a positive approach toward yourself because uh, it will completely change everything you do, also the way of how you feel. And eventually it will change also the way how you see your body and how you see yourself. Somebody's saying guilty on being tough on myself. Yes. <laughs> So many people are too tough on themselves. And um, there is one thing I uh, really liked, a woman who um, I follow on Instagram. She um, is kind of this mindful woman who is always sharing some interesting thoughts. And she said that um, if like, because she was also talking about this topic and I know I was guilty a lot of being mean to myself and negative to myself. And she said, you know, would you say the things that you tell to yourself? Would you say them to another person? And I was thinking about it. And I was thinking about the things I tell to myself. And I was like, oh my God, no, <laughs> that is so mean. <laughs> I would never say something so mean to another person. And um, eventually it made me laugh because, you know, I was like, so... You wouldn't say this to another person, but you are saying this to yourself every day. Like, why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> so maybe that's just a little thing um, to think about uh, toward the end as we're coming toward the end of my talking here, <laughs> of my bullet, bullet points, which I had ready for you. So um, I just really want to encourage you and to motivate you to move just forget about those fears and about those blocks just really move in a way which is comfortable for you and which is um which feels nice so um what i wanted you to uh, think about is really just kind of take anything that you do for yourself as a success so even if you move or you know, uh, there is often this block which we have, for example, that we think we should do this full workout for one hour. And if we don't have the time, we will just skip it because um, we just think it makes no sense. But any movement that you can fit into your schedule, any little moment, couple of minutes, which you can spend taking care of yourself and nurturing yourself and moving your body is actually really beneficial. And I don't know how about you but I definitely feel it like every day when I take a moment and even if it's just five or 10 minutes where I move my body, 
then the day is just so much better. <laughs> Anyone else knows this? <laughs> so um, I was just really um, kind of liberated when I discovered this, that I actually don't have to be so hard on myself. <laughs> and I want to encourage you to also stop being so hard on yourself. And another important message I wanted to share is that definitely when you move, listen to your body and uh, listen to what it says, how it feels in those different movements and um, just kind of observe and experiment. If pain comes, then try to see where the pain is coming from and if you can do it in a different way so that it doesn't hurt. And if, for example, you can even um, track down the cause of the pain. So maybe it's a muscle spasm, maybe it's a muscle which is tight, or maybe it's a muscle which is tired. So, <clears throat> sorry, it can be all these different things. And uh, of course, never push yourself like over pain or over um, where you feel like it's really uncomfortable. So it's always definitely important to listen to your body and to uh, see if it feels uh, good for you. Somebody says, when I'm lazy to work out, dancing is always a great way to start to move. Yes, <laughs> I love it. It's just like putting on some music which you like and you enjoy and then just dancing around. Why not? I love this. And it boosts up the mood so much. <laughs> Somebody is saying Pilates helps, trying to really focus on core strength. Yes, definitely. Core strength is awesome and it's great, uh, great help for keeping the spine and the torso up. Uh, and it also really helps to improve the posture. And what I have found is really helpful, again, when you are trying to put your spine in a neutral position and then work the core that's where like the magic happens <laughs> because um, then for example, you are able to fire the muscles, which are usually not firing. And if you combine it with breath as well, these things can be really helpful um, to fire your muscles in a more symmetrical and more effective and more healthy way. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it valuable, but most of all, I hope that you're not afraid of moving anymore and that you're ready to start moving or move even more. Don't forget to watch part two and three of this workshop. I'll link them for you at the end of this video. You'll also get to practice a bit there and I'm diving deeper into uh, how to move with scoliosis. So it's also super interesting. And uh, if you would like to dive deeper, then I've also created a Scully space, a scoliosis membership, where you will understand how to move with scoliosis, how to adjust your practice to your individual curve. And um, there are practice videos for everyday practice. There's also a um, live monthly class with me. So I'll be happy to see you there. And of course, if you have any questions, drop them here in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. And um, yeah, have a wonderful day, evening or wherever you are right now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. Bye bye.